Hi, I'm Dave Darlington. Welcome back to my studio bass hit recording here in New York City. And today we're here to talk about an exciting new plugin in the Waves arsenal called Waves Tune Real Time. And what makes this plugin new and unique is that you can actually use it in live performance, in real time performance, in the studio or in concert to enable pitch correction, subtle or strong, to help your vocalists come across better in their performances. So right now, in order to do a little uh, audio demonstration, I'd like to bring in my good buddy, Mike Flannery, who's working on uh, his band's album. His band is called Mr. Flannery and His Feelings. And he's going to come in and sing a part slightly out of tune so we can really show you how the plug-in works. Even if you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your Try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. So you can see the plug-in working in real time. It's very comfortable for the artist. It's great for the audience because it's practically invisible. You might be familiar with Waves Tune and know how to use it, but why do we need Waves Tune real time? Well, this is a new pitch detection algorithm that's very accurate, very low latency, and very smooth, so that you can actually use it during recording or during live performances, and it's very transparent. It keeps your artist tuned up, makes them confident, keeps your workflow moving along smoothly, and when they hear playback, they even feel better because they don't have no idea what's going on behind the scenes, but the results are actually pretty stunning. Right out of the box, the preset does pretty much what you'd expect it to do. It takes a pitch that might be a little bit off and quantizes it without being too audible and giving away that you're actually doing some sweetening on your track, which is really important, especially in live concerts. You don't want the audience to feel that you're doing too much, but you want to present your artist in the best possible light. One of the great things about the plugin is the accuracy of its circuit. And uh, you have some controls here to help you tweak how quickly the circuit reacts. Over here on the upper left, we have what I consider the input side, which is the speed of reaction of the plugin. You have the, um, the actual speed in milliseconds from the time it detects the pitch to how it starts to correct it. And then you have another timing setting between transitions of notes. So if you want your singer to have a little bluesy scoop, you can set it slowly, or if you want them to be quantized quickly, you set it a little more quickly, and those can be linked right here with this link button. This uh, graphic display here is, uh, will show you in the audio part of the program. You'll see the pitch correction working up and down, and it also displays the pitch in musical notation. And this is the amount of correction. You can bypass it here, and you can also lessen the amount of correction de depending on how good your singer's doing. The formant uh, radio toggle determines whether the formant moves with the pitch correction or stays the same. Formants are the size of the throat, the tone of the voice that comes from uh, like a male throat being larger and deeper and a female throat being smaller and higher. As you correct the pitch, you want the formant to sound natural to your artist. So as the pitch goes up, the formant should come down. And as the pitch comes down, the formant should go up. In other words, if we go real high with the pitch, it doesn't turn into Mickey Mouse. And if we go lower, it doesn't turn into Darth Vader. Even though we're changing the pitch, the formant or the actual tone of the voice box would stay constant to that artist. Uh, down below, we have the, um, the range of the plugin. Let me shrink the keyboard a little bit so you can see it. This is a representation of the, of the uh, pitches um, starting from around uh, E1 and F1. And this is the range of, of human singing. You can control this range just by clicking and dragging, as you see here. You might want to eliminate extraneous noises. Let's say you're working on a live situation and there's a lot of rumble from the drums or a lot of cymbals or extra uh, high white noise from power guitars or whatever. You can eliminate them from the detection circuit and narrow it down to where your singer is actually working. Of course, that can always be saved in your preset. There's also some radio buttons that relate to the human voice. You can see the bass range is lower than baritone, tenor, alto, mezzo, soprano, and generic. So those are just, just quick ways to help you narrow the range of, uh, of where the plugin's gonna be working. 
this uh, reference pitch here is set uh, default to 440, but sometimes you're in a situation where, for example, an orchestra might be playing on a little bit on the high side, or you're working towards a, a working off a hip hop track which has been slightly detuned somehow or other. You can you can change the detector circuit to work at, at values other than 440, and they can be changed in increments of 0.05 cents. Pretty handy. Down here is the scale. Um, section and of course it's it comes up default as chromatic so all 12 notes of the scale are legal and you have a lot lot of presets of pretty much every scale known to man and up at up the top are the ones we use most major minor etc you can see here when i go to c major all the black keys on the keyboard have these little minus signs above them that shows that those notes are illegal in c major because c major is only the white keys you can also toggle these minus signs. This is something I've never seen in any kind of um, pitch detection algorithm. Let's say a particular note is always on the a certain side. Every every time they, they hit an illegal note, it's always flat. You can toggle this arrow to push it always sharp. Or conversely, you can toggle it to push it always flat. So if, as you get to know your artist and, and the song takes shape, you can actually change these values to do a certain correction every time, as opposed to waiting till it crosses the 50 cent uh, dividing line between one note and another. 51 to 100 goes up, 49 to zero goes down. You can override that with these um, determinations here. This uh, group octaves buttons here, as you can see, um, what I did to the one octave is taking place on all the octaves. That's because I had the group octaves selective, they're grouped together. If I want to really go in and change notes a different way in different octave, let's let's say your singer is always sharp when they're singing low, but as they get higher and it's more difficult to sing higher, they're always flat. You can make the higher ones uh, go up, so they go so they, the flatness is corrected up, and then the lower ones in the lower octaves go down because they they can't quite get down there. So that can be pretty handy, and of course. You musical directors and front of house guys, you know, since you do the same show night after night, you can really tweak for a particular song, a particular performance as you know your artist, especially you guys out on the road, and then you save these as presets and, and rock them from front of house, which can really, really be helpful to present your artist in the best possible light. There's also a MIDI input section. Uh, if you click this button on, it says reference tone, this keyboard. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful in the studio. Every time you hit that C, you're a little flat. Here's the note. That's really a nice way to have a, a keyboard handy just to give a reference pitch, even as you're coming up to a point where an artist is gonna punch in and they're struggling to get the note in their ear, you can give it to them with that. This other radio button, instead of a tone, you can have a MIDI controller or a MIDI channel in your sequencer create the pitch target. So you can actually play the melody that you're trying to have the singer be corrected to, which will tell the um, detection circuit what it's supposed to be doing. So that can be really helpful. You can even make effects with that. You can create gl glissandos and, and uh, grace notes and stuff with that by uh, using your MIDI keyboard. Of course, you, if you put these uh, transitions and speed all the way down, you're, you're asking the plugin to be very, very strong and very, very quick and very, very quantized, which can you can use that as um, as effects in your in your singing, so that it uh, it really becomes a stuttery kind of a thing where it's the pitches go in really quick stair steps, and some people like to use that in their production. So we can do that with this plugin. So there's a few more little fine tune controls up here, and um, these are. You, you really only use these in very specific situations. This vibrato control determines whether or not the plugin is going to affect a, a natural vibrato. It's not adding vibrato like a sine wave or anything. It's just reading the natural vibrato of the performance and deciding whether you want to increase or deke or flatten. If you leave it at 100%, it's just letting it pass through. That's the natural 100% vibrato of your artist. If you go higher in value, it's making that vibrato more evident. And if you go lower in value, it's flattening that vibrato. Some, sometimes vibrato can be a little distracting, particularly in pop music. So 
you may want to use that to um, flatten some vibrato. But it's not a sine wave generator. It's not adding unnatural vibrato. It's, it's acting upon the natural vibrato of your artist. The tolerance values affect the note transition time, whether you want to wait a little longer before you slide to the next note or uh, wait for the note to be a little farther along in its gliss to the next note. The natural uh, demarcation line, of course, would be 50 cents. The 50 cents above a note would go then to be a minus 50 cents of the next half step. So you can, you can uh, increase these values by cents and by time to let the transition wait a little longer. So this, is, this is particularly helpful if your singer's a little tired or a little uh, off pitch. You can let the plug-in um, be a little more tolerant and stay on the, on the right note until it's time to go to the next note. These tolerance controls can help you um, ignore artifacts like uh, cracks or yodels in your, in your singer by, by widening a little bit the, uh, the amount of pitch or the amount of time before the plug-in reacts and moves to the next legal note. So um, if your singer is not so good, you can actually increase the amount of pitch that it can be off before the plug-in moves on to another note. And you can, uh, and you can increase the time a lot of singers always break at a certain point in time on a certain note. So this would let that break transition through before the plug-in moved uh, to a different legal note. So you can ignore, you can help the plug-in ignore artifacts in your vocalist. You probably wouldn't need this on a good singer because there wouldn't be so many artifacts, but these, these tolerance uh, controls give you an extra added level of control so these are pretty high-end fine-tuning controls for, uh, for people who really want to get in there and tweak. I find that the natural pre the, the presets that come with the plug-in are, um, are working really great, the, the little bit of experimentation that I've done on some vocals. Of course, there's uh, always a good um, a bunch of presets that come with all of Waves, and you can add only the scale, or you, which, which would only be the legal or illegal notes, or you could add the preset and the scale, which would of course be your, your timing uh, values and the scale. And one other thing about uh, waves, of course, the little question mark always brings up the manual, which is full of the same information I just went through with you with um, maybe even a better explanation. So you, if, you, if you're really wondering what one of those values is doing, and you're not quite hearing what you think it should be doing, just click on that question mark and, and, and look at that specific spot in the manual. It's really easy. Okay, so Mike's in the booth and he's ready to go. How you feeling, Mike? Feeling good. Pretty warmed up? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me show you a little bit about what I'm doing here in the session. This blue track is our backing track, a stereo backing track. The red fader is my microphone input, and I'm bussing it. To an, to an aux fader so I can run the waves tune real time on a native platform. And then I'm outputting the aux fader to another audio track, which I'm also going to record simultaneously. So I'm recording an untreated vocal, which I'm monitoring, and then I'm recording a treated vocal, which I'll mute for now. Some artists actually like to hear their, in their headphones, to hear their pitch tune. It helps them stay on tune. Some don't. I guess it depends on your artist. But in this particular way of routing, you have both going on at the same time. So the plugin is doing its job as you work. I've made a little preset. I know the song since we're working on it together. And it's, as you can see, it's in E major. And in this particular section, we're going to be working on every time Mike gets to a certain note, he's a little bit under. So I've used that toggle button that I described earlier to make sure that every time we get towards this illegal D natural, it goes up to, um, to uh, E flat or D sharp in this case. So I think we're ready to go. Shall we try one? Sure thing. Here we go. Even if you try your best, you won't achieve the imagine. Try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. There's a time and a place where all your thoughts exist. How'd that feel? 
That's all right. The vibe was great, but as we pointed out, on purpose on the high note, we did it a little bit under. So now let's play back the recorded version and see what happened. Even if you try your best, you won't achieve the imagination. If you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. There's a time and a place where all your thoughts exist. Pretty good, man. It sounds quite heroic. Yeah. What do you think? I think it sounds pretty natural. I thought I went off, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> no, you you actually did, okay. and we uh, we caught you in real time. So that's that's really the whole point. And of course, if uh, if I mess around with these transition parameters and the speed of the detection circuit, you can fine tune it even more. So of, of course, if you're in a studio environment, you've already got your untuned vocal recorded, so you can actually play around with the parameters and make it really, really natural and human and sound like a perfect performance, but not a doctored performance. But in live, you could see that was just a, a basic setting that I tweaked up a little bit. So if we were on stage and he was singing that live, the audience would hear a really nice performance, even if he was fatigued or had a hard time hearing himself or just generally was flat all the time, <laughs> which he's really not. He's actually just doing this for demonstration purposes. Even if you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. Even if you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. Even if you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just your head. Even if you try your hardest, God, it's so hard to just leave your head. So, um, especially for you live guys that, that uh, are working out on the road every day, I think it's a really good addition to your arsenal and very easy to use. There's a 